Hello and welcome to my ethics class. My name is Michael Gold. I full time am a rabbi of a synagogue in Tamarack. I'm a PhD candidate working on my dissertation. My dissertation deals with philosophy and Jewish mysticism, but my love when it comes to the academic world is philosophy. I've been teaching an ethics class now for two years at Broward College. This is the first time I've taught one online. And I want to just give you a few introductory ideas. Of course, the word philosophy comes from philos, which means love, and Sophia, which means wisdom. It's a love of wisdom. The idea is that we could understand what life is all about through thought, through discussion and argument. And philosophers have been arguing about a lot of the issues we're going to cover for thousands of years. So I don't know if we will come to any final answers, but we will begin. Some of the areas of philosophy that I expect you to know something about First of all, in my mind, most important is metaphysics. Metaphysics is the story of what is out there, what's really in the world, what are things made of, and how do I know what things are really made of? And that brings me to a second area, epistemology. Epistemology answers the question, how do we know? Do we know through our mind? Do we know through our senses? Do we know through tradition? And finally, ethics itself is the, the question, what is right and what is wrong? What is good and what is bad? How do we know that? And I think it depends a lot on our metaphysics, what's really out there. So I want to begin with just a little taste of metaphysics to get us started. What's really out there in the world? And philosophers have argued about this. One of the biggest arguments is is the world made of two different substances or is it only one substance the idea that the world's made of two substances is called dualism and the two substances that are usually mentioned are mind and matter most of us are dualists if you grew up in a Christian home or a Jewish home you're probably a dualist you have a body you have a soul when you die, your body goes back to the ground or wherever. Your soul goes back to God who gave it. Two different things, mind and matter. The most famous dualist was Rene Descartes, and we'll be studying him as we do this class. The problem with dualism is if things are made up of mind and matter, matter works by physical laws. So you can somewhat predict what matter is going to do. Mind assumes we have free will. Your brain is made up of matter, but your brain also contains your mind. So do you have free will, or is what you're going to do predictable? And if you have free will, we could talk about ethics. But if you don't have free will, if you have no choice, if what you do is just based on the automatic physical laws of your mind, then how can we even talk about right and wrong? You had no choice. But dualism says there's two things. How do they interact? How does mind interact with matter? As opposed to dualism, the idea that there's only one substance, one thing in the world is called monism. Most monists, most people who believe in monis, monism are materialists. Matter is the only thing that exists. But if matter is the only thing that exists, where does mind come from? Where does consciousness come from? How does mind come out of pure matter? A lot of scientists are materialists. They believe that all there is is matter. Some of the most famous materialists, of course, are people like Karl Marx who said all our behavior is based on just the material world we live in, the economics we live in. On the other hand, there are monists who believe that all there is is mind. Everything is mind. The philosopher George Barclay, he was the one that asked the question, if a tree falls in the forest and there's nobody there to hear it, does it make a sound? 
you need someone to hear it. You need a mind that mind is ultimately everything that exists. And that's called idealism. Idealism, mind is the ultimate reality. So we have the notion that matter is the ultimate reality, that mind is the ultimate reality. Those are two kinds of monism, materialism, and idealism. And then, of course, we have dualism. And the different opinions on this are going to make a difference regarding our ethics. So that's the first great question of metaphysics. A second great question of metaphysics is whatever things are, whatever substances they are, do they change? Here we have to go back to two very ancient Greeks. One of them was named Heraclitus. Heraclitus said you cannot step into the same river twice. That whenever you step into a river, it's a new river. Everything changes. And we see that through our senses. But on the other hand, and follow this carefully, there's Parmenides. And Parmenides said, if I think about it with my mind, you can never get something new that wasn't there before. But when things change, new things are coming about that weren't there before. So change has to be an illusion. Ultimately, things do not change. Parmenides says that things don't change. Heraclitus said that everything changed. Parmenides learns this through his mind. He was a rationalist. Rationalism says we learn through our mind. Heraclitus learned through looking out at the world through his senses. He was an empiricist. Empiricism says we learn through our senses. And that argument between rationalism and empiricism, do we learn through our mind, do we learn through our, through our senses, this is going to go on throughout the class. And ultimately we're going to come to a compromise. And the compromise is going to be the great philosopher Plato. One of your assignments is to read Plato's Allegory of the Cave. Plato imagines that when we look out into the world, it's as if we're prisoners inside a cave. And we see movement, but that movement is not the ultimate reality. That's just a mere reflection that if we were to get out of our position in the cave, the movement is caused by shadows on a wall of a flame. And if we were to get out and take a look at what is really behind that flame, there is an ultimate reality that does not change. And Plato called that the world of the forms. So to Plato, the material world we see does change, but that's not what's important. The ultimate reality is the world of the forms. And philosophy is about using our mind to leave the material world and think about the world of the forms. Plato was a rationalist. And so we have rationalism, we learn from our mind, empiricism, we learn from our senses. Everything changes or ultimate reality does not change. And that argument is going to take us from the ancient Greeks all the way to modern arguments that are taking place in philosophy. Read chapter one of our book and I hope this is a good introduction to some of the ideas.